So let's just hop right into it. Hello, hello, beautiful souls. Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are having the most amazing week. For those of you who don't know me, I am Paula D'Souza. Welcome to Real Beauty Talk. I have been navigating the beauty industry for over two decades. As a multidimensional being, I realized with this pandemic, I had the opportunity to tap into all my other gifts. As a result, Real Beauty Talk is one of the things that I've created um, since. And as a matter of fact, this month is going to be a year since I started. And for those of you who have never tuned in before, what is Real Beauty Talk? Real Beauty Talk is just a series of conversations that, are, um, that is designed to bring you information from regular people like me and you um, to inspire you so that you can also transform your life. And today with me in a virtual studio, I have the most amazing human being that I've met. Let me take this off, I don't need it anymore. I was trying to go live on Instagram, but I don't think I could figure it out right now. So for now, I'm going to leave that alone and figure it out another time. I thought it was really simple, but it's not. So today I have with me this awesome human being. Let me bring her on because I want you all to see, I want you all to see her blush. Hi, Jackie, you're all in real life. So this is Jackie Kuhnhauer. Let me tell you about this fabulous human being. I met her over two decades ago. I can't believe that the time went by so quickly. Um, I met her when I was introduced to doing one of her personality development and modeling classes. It was the most amazing experience and it really changed my life because I, I, in hindsight, I believe that we have angels on earth and we also have angel guides that come through other people because one simple question that was asked, I, I believe it exactly it was, um, I feel like if I'm mumbling because I'm so excited. I believe the one thing um, when this happened was at in one of the classes, we had this test where we had to do our own makeup and style ourselves for like a little mock-up show. And at the end of it, she said to me, have you ever thought of doing a makeup class? And I tell you all, I had no clue that I could have a, a career as a makeup artist. I had no idea. So Jackie, I would never be able to tell my story and share my journey with everyone without mentioning you because I, I really believe that you, put, uh, you play a pivotal role in to me on my path so i want to say thank you for allowing yourself to be used by divine to put me on my path so without further ado please tell everybody who jack you know, is and let's talk about how to jack you call it with you because i have to tell you that you're most welcome you're most welcome my job in life is to stay people on the right path yes so that's what we do all the time the house of jackie is really a big family a big family and we are all professionals or we like to be professionals in the fashion and beauty industry and the course you mentioned that's just one of the many things we do right so tell us about the other things that we do because this is an opportunity for um a lot of people to find out what house of jackie is all about and all the other things that you do because i mean i know um but everybody else don't we train, we train models, but really I always tell them that a model is not just somebody who walks on a runway and looks nice. Yes. Uh, is, you, I think you should remember that. A model is yes. the best one, the first one, the one others want to follow. So yes, the example to follow. A model is somebody who must have themselves totally together. A total person, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, every kind of way. That is a model in my in my estimation. So yes. men and women to be just that, total people. Right. So and we do individual training, like we do for the best village program for mm -hmm. every year. We train all the delegates for their final performance for La mm -hmm. Day. And mm -hmm. right, right now we pres we are presently teaching Janine Grant, who is the our chosen goal for the Miss World pageant in December in Puerto Rico. And mm. we are, right now we are working with her to prepare for right. the Right. So apart from producing, I want, I'm, I'm going to tell everybody this, apart from producing um, fabulous ones to follow, 
you create some of the most amazing um, beauty queens and not just a regular beauty queen, almost every single one of them have been abroad and made an impact. And I wanna share something with you because you reminded me of the example of a model, the one, the one to follow, the first one. And I think I posted something today and I said, one of the things that um, the gems that I got from you guys that's still with me and I've applied it to my life in every area of my life is um, you are, your body is a work of art, the tool of your trade. And when I, when I think about that statement, I don't just think about my physical body because working with other people, you have to present yourself in uh, holistically. So if your mind, body and soul is not together, then you're really not going to be the best version of yourself to share with other people. And while we, Jacqueline and I are talking, this is a conversation, y'all. This is not just like one of those boring interviews. So you guys on the outside looking in, we want you to be a part of it as well. So um, pop into the comment section, ask your questions, make your comments, and I will stop periodically. And um, if you have a question for myself or Jackie, we will definitely want to include you as a part of this conversation. So Jackie, one of the things that I, because I try to dedicate every month to a particular topic. So last week we did Healing Begins With You. And this month, I um, want to focus on define the age in me. Because there are, I've met a lot of women over the years, as soon as they hit 30, it's like everybody started going to panic mode. You look so freaking lutely amazing. I hope I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> so let us know what is your secret. How do you stay so youthful? I mean, and you're not just youthful in your body, you're youthful in your mindset, you're youthful in your attitude, because I saw this fabulous video with you, with the um, grandson showing you a dance, and you are all, and then you're looking down. If y'all are following her, you could go on her page. And my girl is in a short, and I'm thinking, oh my God, look at this woman's legs. <laughs> you don't look like 77, so tell us what your secret is, please. <laughs> I am 76 and proud. But it's all about a clean heart, a free mind. That is what it is, really. That's it? It must, it must reflect on you. Okay, so tell us, do you have a, a skincare routine? No, I don't. I am one of those people. Do as I say and don't do as I do. <laughs> so, how do you keep your skin looking so youthful? I teach it, but I don't follow it. So having, Jackie, how... having three children with good skin, ah. cheap. having that didn't come cheap. So, uh, being a single parent, and taking care of their skin, I couldn't afford to take care of mine, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So what have you done over the years to maintain? What is your secret? You want to know? I'm just a happy person. Okay, a happy person from the inside and all of that reflects it's on your it, it must come out, it must come out. Okay, Me what about Right. What about like, do you have like a special diet? Do you exercise or do you maintain? Yes, I walk, I don't drive. I don't drive, so I walk. I walk, okay. walk all over San Fernando. Oh my gosh. At San Fernando, I had the opportunity to walk <laughs> downtown San Fernando and those hills and those stairs. Oh right. my gosh. No wonder your legs look so good. <laughs> no legs keep anybody's legs good. Yes, 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 yes. So any advice to um, us younger women who want to look as fabulous as you do when we get to our 70s? Any special advice? Your diet is always important. Your diet is always important. Right. Leave all the junk food. Leave all mm. the junk food, the oily foods. Eat plenty of fruits, plenty of fruits, plenty of water. Mm -hmm. You're sure to go right. Okay, and um, I want to also, because a lot of women, when they hear, um, I know after a certain age, when the birdies start coming around, they stop celebrating. And if we have to tell women that A is okay, what would your advice be to those women who are very um, conscious or subconscious of the whole age and vibe? When you look at your mirror, sometimes you feel the pride. 
Seriously? <laughs> yes, when you look at your mirror and you and if you have a good memory, uh -huh. you feel the scream. Wow. You tell yourself, well, it had to happen all the Right. It's all a part of the process. Yes. For those who can't handle it and you can afford it, you can always go and have some plastic surgery. You can go and have your face done. But yes. I find when people look at you, they see your age. They know your age. You can't have a tight face, a tight, tight face, and a tight body, and you're 80 years old. It just doesn't compute. Yes, yes, yes. But Jackie, have you noticed that women these days are really aging differently from like, let's say maybe 10, 20 years ago? Because I remember uh, growing up as a child, as a teenager, when you hear somebody who is, um, oh, she's 50, and you look at a person, she, I, I don't know, the concept of 50 is there. But now when you see women, cause like I'm 52, I don't even feel like 52. I don't know what 52 look like. I mean, do you know Natasha Jones? Yes. Natasha Jones she's from, almost, Jones. she's from South originally. Yeah, she's almost 60 and she looks yes. no way close. So, you know, I um I really want us to use this particular moment, just in what in, in 60 seconds, what can you say to a woman who is in that space where she's feeling insecure about aging? When she looks into into that mirror and she sees, you know, how far she came from, what can you tell her to encourage her to let her know? It's okay. But you have to start from early. Mm -hmm. five, 75 years, or we say three score and 10, 70. Ah. But you, if you divide that in three, from one to 23, you're young. From 20 ah. to 46, believe it or not, you're middle aged. And that is the time when you have to start to take care of your skin. Start to think yes. about your cream, but not going out into the sun without your sunscreen. You have to take mm -hmm. care of your from that age mm. so that later on you would keep looking good yes and i always say um hey Durante, let me tell you something jackie jackie <laughs> you have the most supportive circle <laughs> I've ever. i think this is the first time i'm live and i'm seeing 24 people on this live and i've seen all my favorite people there's the ronte i mean apart from my regular people the ronte there's trudy there is somebody called Pat Pierre. Hey, Kamala. Um, I saw um, Miss Kali Charan. Yo, welcome. Um, you are a gem of a woman, and I really appreciate that you, you sharing your time with us. And also, thank you to everybody who continues to support House of Jackie because Jackie is such an amazing human being. So um, I just want to add to just finish up this whole conversation about aging. What I noted, because I remember when I first came, when I came back to Trinidad last time, because I, you know, as you know, I had different stints. Mm -hmm. I um, I went through a season of not doing much. And uh, when I start moving around again, mm -hmm. I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. And I realized, uh, why, when I, why, what I felt in my body is like my heart was always racing. And what I realized is because I was not as, mobile as i used to be so jackie i think would you agree that the most important thing as it relates to aging is to keep moving that's right you keep going and going and going i go i go for at least eight hours a day and totally active yes and then you're walking for sure hey hey um uh, vanetta bigford and larry rapasad so jackie all your people is here so jackie let's talk about you have raised three beautiful children and now you have four, it's four grandchildren. That's right. Okay, so tell us what is the secret to raising fabulous children that is turning, that is going to be amazing adults. That is the, the key. What a lot of people do not realize is that you actually form these children, not when they're in their tummy and you form them physically, but you make these children. That's what a lot of people do not realize. That mm. if that person is going to grow up to be manly, it is because you have made them manly. If they know about God, it's because you have taught them about God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If they respect people, it's because you have made them like that. So we really make these children up until I would say until age 15. You are right. totally in control of them. And we yes. don't realize that. So we 
we make these children. Mm -hmm. So Jackie, do you think that um, we, there are a lot of, uh, I, I don't want to sound as though I'm being judgmental here, but there are a lot of wayward adults in our society. Do you think um, the lack of fun, that foundation in the home is, is key to um, them changing? Because I mean, they say um, train a child in the way he should go, meaning give him the best foundation ever so that as an adult, they will be able to make better decisions or wiser decisions and to represent their family. But we see so many teenagers as well as adults going off on that side. So what do you think is, is is lacking or what do you think is the thing that needs to be really firm in our home so that you know we have more solid adults in our society we need true true guidance for these children always true guidance if a child goes grows up in a home and everybody's cussing everybody else they are going to go there and trust too yeah if, for real if they come home with a book and you don't know where that book has come from you say take that back to the school or give it back to the person then right. that, child that you cannot steal okay. yes if you can bring home a new pair of sneakers every week and you cannot you don't have to explain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then if anything goes i can get it anywhere i want that's not yes. it's supposed to be we have to train children we right. must it. and i am always strong about that the children become what we make them become and who we make them become right and is there a different um approach to um you know when um, your, your kids are young they are one way and then as an as adults they go off and they do their own thing what is the key to, to having your family stay together in that whole you know family doing things together um maybe still being an influence because they will they, they continue to respect you as their mother and i mean i know you don't just have your biological children because you have all these girls and guys who refer to you as mommy i have hundreds of children i know i know yeah. that dialogue is most important to yeah. me dialogue and understanding each other that really mm -hmm. makes sense. you can't just bully them and shout at them and tell them, yes, do it my way or get out of my house. It's not that. You have to sit yeah. and sit with them. And I right. always have to teach them that there's somebody up there. There's right. them all the time. They have to understand that. Yeah, so open communication is the key. Open communication all the time. Dialogue right through. And what is the key to building um, a connection of, of trust? Because I mean, I was I was a child at one time, and there are certain things that I would have never gone to my parents. <laughs> we, all pull little tricks. we all pull little tricks. That is part of life. We all pull little tricks. Right, right, right. Have to let them know that they are loved regardless. Yes, because I think yeah, it's just to kind of like give um, you know some of your children who are like me, raising now adults. Uh, but we are raising adults anymore. We're supporting adults because my son is um, now 29. Wow. Yes. And um, he don't always come to me, but I give him that space so that he could do him. And I give him that um, assurance that guess what? I will always be here. So I want to give, I want you to give just one last um, advice in a nutshell to women uh, who are parents of adult children how do you continue to support your children while still maintaining hey i am the parent still even though you're an adult yes i remind them of i remind them of that you could be 50 years old and i could still lash you yes <laughs> <laughs> so then then jackie i learned from the best because i um, i have had several situations where i had to remind my son say let me tell you something i am still the adult in this relationship that's right yes so um how is everybody on the outside doing i'm gonna pop by and look to see if we have any any questions so far any questions about the topic that we're talking about um now's the time to jump in because i'm gonna move right along as you know the time usually goes by very very quickly and i want to get as much in so jackie oh i am curious about this one thing because from observation i remember growing up as a child 
my parents were very strict. But when my son came along, it's like, who are these people? <laughs> Why is it so different? Because I'm almost sure that your um, children would have observed the same thing the way how you treat your grandchildren. What is the difference between raising children from back then and the children that are coming up now? It changes with each generation. Because when we, when we have our children, we are young and we should be fun. And sometimes we think that the children are keeping us back. But as you get out of the you relax, so you start to enjoy your grandchild. Right? Now that I have great grand, I am even more relaxed. So I can give him a wow. Thing. Wow. So it's understanding is really understanding. The children have to understand. And they have right. to understand they're the different generations. Oh, so that's what is it is a generational yes. thing. Yes. And it's always right. sometimes it's even difficult to because mm -hmm. when my grandchildren speak, I have problems sometimes understanding them. Because right. they speak different language sometimes. Okay. When you're telling me um, what MYI, I hope my mic will know what is MYI. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, especially with the texting lingo, because That's my right. son, yeah, my son, when he texted with me, I was like, what the hell? What is that? And then he could tell me, mommy, everything is Googleable. I'm like, child, don't let me come through this for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I think, too, how do you handle the whole? Because, I mean, the, the, this particular generation, they're so expressive. And coming from that, that generation where, you know, you couldn't talk back to your parents and how, I mean, how have you managed to flex? And what advice can you give to anybody that is in the same position? You have to learn to flow with the flu. You have to learn to no. understand this is a different generation and you mm. have to flow or you they, they will just leave you behind. Yes. Behind and there will be no communication. So you have to mm -hmm. mix with them, chat with them. Sometimes they shock you, eh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they, they shock you. You say, well, what the hell is going on here? But right, right. It's a new generation. And does that relate to, to the whole concept of discipline? How does that relate to the whole concept of discipline? No, if you that, have to say they still there are certain rules that must be obeyed, come what me right those those rules will never change right you but can't be adult, you have to you have to obey those rules yes Auntie oh, still yeah. is Auntie. yes 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 so y'all i hope everybody is um is having a good time just as much as we are let me see who is there a parent is a parent jenny roma says a chair a parent is a parent but your adult child is an adult and deserves to be treated as thus just my thoughts. Oh, well, I mean, to turn next to me, because I mean, not because you're an adult, then you should approach me in a disrespectful manner, because you should always know that I'm your parent, because I I, I am probably mostly the only one in my family. I do not speak to my parents in any kind of disrespectful way. Even if it's something that I don't want to hear, I am very, I give them my time. I listen and I say yes, no, whatever the case is. But thank God, my parents. I know some people have different types of relationships with their parents as an adult, but I am very blessed that I don't have those issues with parents getting into my business and all that stuff. They are very, very supportive people. So I'm very grateful for that. So um, I think um, even as an adult, we need to give our parents that respect, you know? And. Um, Bonnet says, oh, Bonnet and... The respect, and the respect has to go both ways. The respect has to go and come. Yes, yes, yes. I wouldn't get into my son's business, but if if he he don't just respect refer to me as... You know, you know one of the things that has really irked me about this, this generation, when they refer to you as, hey, <laughs> if they send a, a text message, hey, it's like, who the hell is hey? Yes, <laughs> You know, if you say, hey, mom, or hey, ma, or whatever the case is, that, that I can relate to that, but hey, I'm not your friend. Am I being too strict? No, not at all. But I am Jack, eh? I am uh -huh. Jack. I am oh, Jack. Jack. Or to my grandson, the same, my TikTok grandson, I'm Granos. Granos. <laughs> Granos, how are you going? <laughs> oh, boy, that is something else. So, Jackie, let's talk about... Um, 
one of the things that is so important um, to our holistic being, self-care. Do you have a self-care practice and how important is self-care to your well-being? Self-care, right. We have to we have to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. I see all the young ladies, all the young men that I deal with. You have to love yourself and you have to give yourself a certain amount of time every day. Right. Every, you deserve at least one hour. Yes. One hour yours for you. You must mm -hmm. leave, leave the children, leave your husband, leave everybody for one hour. And give right. yourself whatever that takes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And um, I think I want you to really give us a perspective of what self-care really is. Because a lot of times when the average person hear about self-care, what they're thinking about is a trip to the spa. And I found out some time ago that there's a difference between when you go to the spa, that is grooming, that has nothing to do with self-care. So what exactly is, is yes, self-care? I mean, I know it's gonna vary from day to day. What does that look like? Self-care is your beauty, what I call it, your beauty routine. Okay. Beauty, eh? Because your self-care, one day you might need to sit and meditate for half an hour. Right. You need to read a book. Yes. Or you may need to sit down and give yourself a nice manicure. Right. Seeing about ourselves gives us a certain amount of satisfaction that we need. Right. Yeah. You must do it. You must have what we call a beauty routine. Mm -hmm. And your beauty okay. routine takes care of your mind, your spirit, and your physical being. Right. So in other words, ladies and gents, your, when she says your beauty routine, she's not talking about your skincare routine. That's a whole different kettle of fish. Beauty routine could um, go for, range from reading a book, meditation, um, taking care of yourself, setting boundaries, being very clear about your yes and your no. So all of that is, is a part of your self-care routine. And I mean, this ties right into the next question. What about, um, how do you manage your mental health? Especially within the last two years with us navigating all the challenges that has come up on us um, as a result of dealing with this pandemic. How have you managed your mental health? Not just in this, I want you to talk about this season uh, because I know you would have had to pivot because this is a whole different time for us. So take us back to what your, um, your mental health routine was back then and what it has, uh, what how you have pivoted now? Well, I have always been so busy that I haven't had time to be depressed, to be tired. I have worked nonstop all my life. This over here is the first time I have had time chance to relax. Ah, it's, the first so it's a blessing for you. Myself. Well, I can't believe it. I actually, I didn't know I had a veranda. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I didn't know I had that until COVID. When wow. COVID came, I have the afternoon. I'll go and sit there. I maybe have a glass of wine or something, and sit mm -hmm. and relax and chat with my children, chat with my grandchildren. Right. That for me is perfect relief. But really, with mental health, mm -hmm. I believe that we always have to acknowledge the power of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. And on first name basis with him, once you are our friends, your mental health will be perfect. Because you right. and he's there all the time, he's always ready to listen. He on IG, yes. he on Facebook, he on he on Twitter, he on everything. Because yes. I see he want. Right. And you know, talking about it because that was my next uh, question, is like, do you have an a spiritual practice? And um, I mean, I know I want us to understand that there is a difference between spirituality and, and, and religion. So let's share what your, 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 um, your, your spiritual practice is so that, you know, we could give some perspective to others who um, maybe never even understand what it's all about. And my, most of my spirituality came from my mother. Uh -huh. She was a very religious person. And mm. in, introduced us to the church and everything that was right as far as religion is concerned. But for spirituality, she always taught us how to live. 
for example, every time or some a baby one or somebody come up the step and they she will give them something. And when right. I get they, so you have to give something to everybody. She'll say mm -hmm. you you'll never know which one is Jesus. Yes. So that's the kind of spirituality I know. Right. <laughs> that's what I know. And then she'll yes. tell us if we see somebody and it was a scripture or anything, we say, therefore, but for the grace of God, do I? I think mm -hmm. that I still preach it. When I see somebody like that, that's what I say to myself. So in other words, right. be grateful for who you are. Right, right, right. So, so um, to me, that is spirituality. Right. And um, being able to stay grounded spiritually as in connecting with that inner part yeah. of your being that gives you the guidance is the one um thing that will take you through any adversity because like i said um adversity finds all of us so what is one of your strategies for dealing with those challenges that we have as human beings we go through it but we have absolutely no control over it i have had, it? i've had multiple challenges in my life multiple yes yes I, and that's a part of yes. growth eh? when i was a teenager i was diagnosed with a disease, an oriental disease called Takayasu. Ooh, only, Asian, only Asian people have that disease. Uh -huh. I think the Chinese people, my ancestors sent it for me. Okay. And so I have lived with that all my life. It hasn't been easy. And then mm. I chose to be a single parent. Right. I chose to earn my living in an uncharted occupation. Something mm. like just like you, something that was right. relatively new. So challenges yes. have been there all the time. Yes. Many multiple challenges with all three of those things. And mm. to me, we have one thing that I hate to say that many people don't use this. Mm. A brain. Common sense. A brain. You see yes. that? Brain? That brain could work. But we have yes. to you can't just let it sit there yes don't sit on it that's not the place it's supposed to be it's supposed to be up here yes we have to think and i think that is that is what has made a difference between me and a lot of other people right you have challenges but you think about them you sit down and you work out solutions mm -hmm. there must be mm -hmm. every problem right and once you have that solution you act on it right i um i I listened to um, a message recently from um, uh, Dr. Cindy Trim, mm -hmm. and she has this series that she just started. It's called, um, the question was, why do you think Jesus taught in parables? And she said, um, a lot of people think they're thinking, but they're just rearranging the ignorance. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? Like that, yes. yes. A lot of people think they're yes. thinking, but they're just rearranging their right. ignorance because a lot of people don't understand that you have the power to think things through as you go along with your challenges. And what was one of the major um adversity that you had to overcome to maintain House of Jackie for what 30 years or close to 30 years? With House of Jackie, I to me I've never had problems. We never had problems. I, not not problems. Sorry, I should say I've had problems, but not unsolvable problems. Yes. Because I mean, I mean every time you hit a stumbling block, you sit and you analyze it. You analyze right. it and you decide which direction you take it. Uh-huh. Then while you're doing that, you connect with the Almighty and you He loves us and He takes care of us. Yes, 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 yeah. Because you came from, um, I know you're, you're, you're um, originally from San Fernando and then yes. you break into the, the North market because I went to the class yes, in, in, North. Um, in North. And I mean, I I know we're going to get cussed for this, but guess what? I'm not apologizing. Y'all don't come for me. Trinidadians are very competitive. Who come from South, who come yes. from North, who come from Tobago. And we don't realize, guess what? We are one big happy family. There's no reason to compete. I could bring my unique gift from South and you could bring your unique gift from North and we could come together or you could make something grand. And it's one of the things that I feel saddest the most when it comes as it relates to the, because I mean, I'm part of the fashion industry as well. And Trinidad is supposed to be the fashion hub of the Caribbean. 
but we lack this whole unity vibration among us. We can't get it. We can't get it together. What is um the one thing that you have done to not get sucked into the whole whatever that is, and just to stay grounded in what you do? As they say, I bat in my piece. You bat in a crease. <laughs> you say I bat in my piece. Yes, yes, yes. It takes out. I come to I come to know. I come to Boston. I give my sessions. Mm -hmm. If we have a discussion, show to do in North Trinidad. We come up. We meet with the other models, the North Base models. We have no. I have no girls. And yes, my models dare not have a girls. Yes, they they are not there because I am not like that. So they will not be like that. My models yes. are beautiful bunch of people like you, and everybody mm. is just happy and they contented with, with what they have and who they are. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we don't have to fight each other. That is that is so true. That's that's just absolutely amazing. But you know, Jackie, I have to tell you, you really um, it's like you you didn't just pass through and put a little foundation by me. It's like you put a, a drill because you know how many models that is both. <laughs> because they come to a fashion show, the eyebrows not done. They come oh, to ask if you have a razor and then the legs and shave and they forget to shave the vagina. I'm like, what the hell? I said, y'all need to go to the house of Jackie because I was taught you always have to be prepared because even i mean i still apply it now my my brushes are always washed my makeup kit is always packed if somebody call me now for now for a job i am ready so what is it really lacking in this whole thing that these models up to this day in this advanced day and age they can't get it together that hey this is not a game this is a job you come to do and it's now when you come here it's not about you because you remember you said you're just a mannequin when you go to a, a fashion show. You have to relax yourself. And if the people want to put blue on you, you got to learn how to rock that blue and a pink hair or whatever the case is. So, so talk to the models who are who have never had, had an opportunity to be a part of House of Jackie. Let's just give them a little ooh of what they are really need to be or what they could um, gain from connecting with you at some point in the future when this thing is all over. You have to respect the profession as it was yes yeah. you have to respect it and once you put, once you respect it you will be professional and a professional model is a dream a professional model a good professional model but as you said you can't tell you know, about to show and pull out a razor to start a meeting your your bikini line yeah you can't model somebody's clothes and the next day they have to send it to the laundry. Yes. It's like smell it the hell high. You know, I know. Money. You must be professional. And you yes. want professional. If you want professional money, you have to get professional standards. Yes. Yes. And people people are not going to work with you if you come and you have an attitude, they give any the makeup artist attitude, they give any the hair, that's the attitude. Makeup um, is done a particular way because there's a particular style, and then you go into the bathroom yeah. to change because you don't like your eyebrows. So, oh my gosh, I have um, had that. Yes, I mean, why are we still having this issue? Is it that they really don't understand that this is a professional thing? No, or is it because that it's so disrespectful to the local industry? Because if they go overseas, they're going to the line. They, they will do it. They will totally the line. They will always be perfect when they get over there. But when they're here, yeah. they don't give a damn. They can't reach on time. You tell yeah. them to come in t at 8 a.m. to get your makeup done. They come with all their makeup on. How can you do that? That's an insult. Yeah. So I guess it's a mindset then. And then um, let's go. I'm going to jump right into a question that is coming from Moses Bob. He says, I would love to know what has the younger generation taught Miss Jackie that she never expected to learn that she treasures as worth and value? You wouldn't believe. Facebook, <laughs> IG, Twitter, that is uh, what the younger generation has taught me. I was right. completely lost and my granddaughter who now has the name the house of Jackie, she now uh -huh. has, 
She's the person who has taught me all of that. And every now and then she'll give me little words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And she will teach me. I am teaching her with my experience and she's mm -hmm. teaching me with a younger approach at all. Wow. So I you have really to, I have to respect them. Right. So Jackie, you would definitely endorse the whole idea of you have to be fluid and flexible to get through this life at every of stage. Of course, of course. You have to learn to bend and twist. Yes. I live in San Fernando, and if you tell me there's a meeting in Puerto at nine, I'm going to leave San Fernando at seven. Yes. I'm going to come and I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there first and I'll be ready for whatever. That is the only way you can make it by making mm -hmm. yourself available and pliable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and as we are on this particular in this particular area already, because it seems that this conversation always flows exactly how I have. I don't have to look at the questions. So, what I want uh, for you to share with us right now is over your three score, three scores and ten, right? That's right. That's what you say. Extras. <laughs> yeah, and extras. Your three scores and ten are your extras. What is like? It was too solid um advice or well, well not advice two of your solid lessons that you have learned within that three scores and ten that is like your most valuable asset let me think have i learned about myself i've learned yeah, about yourself and life in general i've learned that i am bright <laughs> you are bright yes i've learned that, that i can handle almost any situation that comes my way mm -hmm. and what i've learned about people is that you don't know who are your people you don't know when you have true friends true people loyal people treasure, uh -huh. treasure them right i'm fortunate i am fortunate to have that i have loyal models friends benefactors everything and i thank god for them uh -huh. and looking at me My, yes <laughs> my um this conversation with you is evident because i mean i am seeing so many people some some of the people that i know as well so many people are here supporting you and by extension me so i'm grateful for all of y'all who are spending your wednesday evening giving us this love and giving jackie your um ever never ending support and love as well so um jackie do you have a favorite age do i have a favorite what do you have a favorite age? Age? Yeah, age. As in like a season, um, um during your three scores and ten, um, you had a favorite stage of your life that you enjoy the most. No. I have enjoyed my no? life. I enjoy right. every minute of my life. Well, I enjoy mm. life. I enjoyed I have enjoyed every minute of my life and every stage yes we have little dogs you must have little dogs that is how we yes, do yeah that's normal yes and as you say you're thanking everybody for tuning in i would like to thank them as well and to tell them that I keep watching don't use it to be alone keep watching paula i look at her all the time and you learn a lot you learn a lot of good little makeup tips you learn plenty yes. of things that's paula so you all keep watching her please not just yeah. this. Thank you, Jackie. I didn't do a uh, makeup today because I just wanted to just be, you know, yes. focus on uh, on um on us and what we have to share. And as we talk about favorite age, um, what is one of your best life experiences to date? My best life experience. I shared it with Darunti. Uh huh. I shared two of my best life experiences. I now realize it's not true. It's two I shared with them one was training a blind girl a blind woman uh -huh. a sighted queen show wow queen show. and we trained her and she won the show and she won the prize for best model as well that wow was that was a great experience i, I wanted wow. to scream when i when i heard them call her as the best model can you imagine Ten other people in the show, and they all model and they can see, and she cannot see a thing in it. Wow! That show. And my other best experience was having a fashion show I coordinated for that one day, 
shown on BBC TV. Oh, nice. Here. It was it showed over here. They kept showing that that fashion. Oh, that is so <laughs> awesome. To me, BBC TV is it, eh? So that's it. Yes, the Ronte have a, a bone to pick with you because the Ronte invite me to do one show and he never asked me back. I want to know if I was that bad. <laughs> don't the COVID will soon be over and we're going to be back on the runway. Don't bother. But yeah. really, people talk about different good experiences. To me, every experience can be turned into a good one. A model yeah. going down a runway, doing everything right, doing the right things with the right garment, the right music and everything. That is a dream to me. It doesn't matter yeah. where the show is, but that, that is a beautiful experience. So you don't have and to be on top of the world. Right, right, right. Any show. Yes. And Jackie, you know, who, who um, came to mind immediately? I just had this flash of an image of, guess who? Sharon Imber. Oh, of course. Sharon is a dream. Sharon, Sharon floats on that catwalk. Sharon floats. She doesn't walk, she floats. My thing with Sharon is her. Sharon is such a beautiful person. Yeah, the person that it just shows and it comes through. Yes, and she's heart, so graceful. Mind clean heart, it never fails. Yeah, it yes, fails. yes, yes. So that's amazing. So I know we're having a really and she sees a young model and she realizes mm -hmm. she's struggling a bit. She'll come across and say, "You're modeling for the first time," and mm -hmm. that is the kind of person Sharon is. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, um, we're kind of getting now close to the hour. So I'm going to start wrapping up. I have the, the special segment that I have here yes, that yes. I love to have fun, but it's still giving information. So my first one is, what is your superpower? I mean, I know you have many, but what's one of them that is, you know, um, really impact other people's lives? I love people. Yes. That's my superpower. I love people. Yeah, and, I, show um, them, I show them that love and mm -hmm. I reciprocate it. Right. And uh, let me tell everybody who's listening um, from my experience with, um, with Jackie, her, your personality, and your patience, because I know for a fact that dealing with women, especially young girls who are still trying to, those are still, still trying to figure themselves out and who are trying to figure who they are as a person your patience with with us is like phenomenal and i mean i know i mean i know that you have your little impatient moment but i've never heard you scream at anybody mm -mm. ever you don't even appear to be flustered you are always the calm <laughs> one and everybody going crazy so i really thank you for that because whenever i think about you in the future i will always think about this really beautiful calm um kind of person because even you know i didn't know anybody from adam y'all didn't know me from adam and you embraced me my son come around i was able to come to your house a couple of times find my way to san fernando not knowing anybody or anything and i've always felt very very welcome i'm, I'm so grateful that I you are a people person yes and um what are you most grateful for hey deborah hey abigail and Elba. Yes, Jackie, your next album. What are you most grateful for? My yeah. parents. Ah. They are beautiful parents, great parents. Yes. Great, great parents. They instilled everything in us. Yes. They were not loving parents. They did not show our love. Mm -hmm. They did not show our love, but we knew we were loved. Right. So, what is one lesson that you um, that you still carry with you from your um, from your childhood days? Um, I remember doing A levels and going to my father after the first month and saying, "Power, well, that's what you want. Power, I'm not I want a car, a, a car. Let me let me stop it now." I turned to me and said, "You started it, so you will finish it." Wow. So how did they react to you now going into the, um, this fashion and beauty industry? No problem at all. No problem. I, they know I like art. They know uh -huh. I like culture. And they totally different from my other sisters. I was a different one. But they accepted. They accepted us. Whoever, right. whatever we wanted to do, that was, that mm. was it. 
Right. And Jackie, everybody who is like who had the opportunity and the privilege to be close to you knows that you have a passion for elephants. What oh, yeah. is that? What where did that come from? Um I, I mean I'm not asking you to define it, but I just think it is just so um phenomenal, you know. I love how they move. Uh -huh. walk, I feel they walk to me, they walk inside their skin. This is the same climbing. This big, yeah, this, so massive, this massive elephant, and they're so yeah. graceful. I look at them moving, and yes. that's how I want my models to move. Yeah, <laughs> ah, so I know me. I'm glad I asked you that question because I now make the connection because elephants are extremely graceful, very, even very though they're so huge. Even when, because I was looking at the video the other day, even when they're about to sit down. Mm -hmm. With how heavy they are, uh -huh. they, it's like they, it's like a whole, I don't know. It's just it's always. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Everyone never forgets a good deed. Yeah, kind of. okay. That's another thing about elephants. They never forget anybody who's been kind to them. Right. Years and yeah. years after, they remember. Yes. I always like to be like this. Yeah, I'm sure that's that, that I mean, you have that spirit in you already so maybe that is your, where your passion comes from because you're naturally like that so that's your spirit animal the elephant yeah so i have this segment that i call um in twos um so you you don't have to really go into details i'm gonna just ask you um two keys two key things that you learn from different things right so your first two keys um friendship Love. What are, what are two Love valuable friends. keys that you learn from, from being someone's friend and from having somebody be your friend as well? Just love. I love my friends and they love me. Right. Okay. And two, two key takeaways from your experience with marriage. Friends in marriage. Companionship. And how to describe it? Love of the arts. My former yeah. husband we both love the arts. And even now yes. we are better, and we speak about the arts all the time. Yes, so you had that one thing in common. We're still friends. Right. And then I'm um, going to kind of flip it and two key takeaways from um from the experience of divorce because we know that a lot of people, um, I mean, you don't have to go into whatever your personal um, thing, but I don't believe divorce is the end of your whole experience in relationships. So I, I kind of want to get your perspective on that. That's why I asked you, what are two key takeaways that you learned from your divorce about yourself? About myself? Self-reliability, that I can rely on myself always. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and freedom of choice. I made that choice. Right. Um, and, and isn't it amazing that, you know, um, because I, I know a lot of couples who they couldn't stay married, but they are best friends after divorce. What do you think that is about? But I know that my former husband is looking at this right now. Uh huh. Spoke him this morning, and I said, "Make sure you look at me." <laughs> <laughs> because remember, we want to uh, encourage women that I'm men as well. Because I've met men who got through divorce because of whatever sourness or whatever, and they couldn't even resolve the whole idea that everybody's not the same. So this this particular question is geared towards inspiring people that. Not because your marriage didn't work out, it means that you don't have a friendship or you have to just end your whole um, um, idea of, of having a future relationship or even a future yeah. husband, you know? So that's what, where I really um, want you to speak from. I mean, I know it's your personal experience, but just to give some guidance as, hey, um, it's not the end of the world. Especially if you have children. Like you right. have right. You have to share children, and those children have to be, they have to be aware that it was love that brought them into this world. Yes. Hatred and spite and so forth. You have right. to have happiness, and to me, 
choosing your partner even if the marriage doesn't work when you right. choose a partner who you can share life with okay then you okay then you but you mm -hmm. share life together that you all have right. things in common together that yes. both of you have a certain amount of class between you and that, yes. that makes it, i will always yeah. Yeah, and then the communication is important because co parent you will always be co parenting even if you have adult children. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, for me, um, from my experience, the saddest part of my connection because I mean, I have my um, son, but his father and I never got together. We don't even have a relationship. Not because I don't want to, you know, I would speak to him if he say hi, but we just like two strangers, and that was his choice, you know. And, um, but it doesn't stop me because I understand, um, as, as I'm thinking about this, do you think there's a difference between a husband and a life partner? Yes. Okay. What in your opinion is different? Because I was trying to have a conversation. Yes. Uh -huh. Occasionally you will meet someone who can be both. Right. If you have yeah. similar interests and so you can be a husband and a life partner. But right. Quite often, you have a, a just a life partner, right? Without a husband, then yes. you don't want the husband again. Yes, I want a life partner, right? <laughs> yes, that's yes. what I always say. I want a life partner. I don't want a husband. I don't. No, then there, I don't, don't, I don't want that. Again. Yes. So I'm happy that I I was able to ask you that because I was um I had a conversation recently with someone who was trying to explain it to them. So coming from somebody who has been there, done that. I know that I'm not crazy for thinking the way that I do. So this next sec um, section is called preferences. Yes. You want to know what your preference is. And somebody said just now, oh, we, we, um, we want a part two. <laughs> <laughs> we want a part two. Let me see where that come from. So I hope you are. I mean, I'm so happy to see everybody is enjoying the conversation. Thanks for your feedback. I mean, I know um, when I grow up, I'm going to have a moderator who's going to be able to moderate. And um, oh, Larry Rampasad says we need a, a part two. And then Abigail is here. And Gloria says, I'm Abigail. Bruno. Yes. Yes, Abigail Bruno. Abigail Bruno, my darling, Abigail. Beautiful chocolate goddess. Yes. So I'm going to shoot towards and you tell me which one. So the first one is tea or coffee? Coffee. Juice or water? Juice. Gym or dancing? Dancing. Beauty shows as in queen shows or fashion shows? I know this is going to be a tough show one. Fashion show any day. Fashion show any day. <laughs> and I wore it in beautiful fashion shows. I uh, went to the and people laughed from the beginning to the end and I, I felt I was disgusted. I wanted to walk out. Oh my gosh. I wanted to walk. I, I will never go to another one. And then um, the last one in this segment is morning or evening? Morning. Okay. And then um, the other section, and I think that I love this section. So this one is first thoughts. So I'm going to do the same thing. Shoot a couple of words with you, and you could use six to seconds or less um, just to say what first comes to mind. And um, you don't necessarily have to explain, but we just want to know what are your thoughts on love? Love? Sex. And I'm not going to explain. Sex without love is nothing. For real. That's like, what they say? Going to a party and have no music. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and uh, friendship. Friendship. Family. My family, uh, are my, my family are my friends, and my friends are my family. And yeah, somebody said that was a spicy answer. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, um, I mean, I, I know your answer was the thing, but my question is your beautiful family. I think of my beautiful family. Uh, succession. That's right. Yes. Succession. Yes. Right. That is, that is who will carry on for me. Right. 
Um, your thoughts on the fashion in fashion and beauty industry? Like Maybe I should um, do this in two because the fashion industry is different from the queen show industry. Yes. So, yes. So give me your thoughts like on those shows. two. I don't like queen shows. I don't like queen shows either because you know like why? I don't like the fact that it, it, it encourages women to compete with each other. That's the part that I don't like. So that, is that the same for you as well? Yes, I don't like that at all. Too much, yeah. too much big back biting and bickering. Yes, 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 yes. We want women to understand. I guess where well, we're all connected, and we don't want the only person, yes, the only person you should be competing with is the person you were yesterday. That's right. Today I want to be better than I was yesterday. yesterday. Tomorrow I want to be able to present the best version of myself. So, okay, what's your thoughts on the um the fashion industry? Your first thought on fashion. It needs redoing. Yeah. Needs and the last day, it needs we have to add professionalism to it and let people stop going after the fast book. Yeah. And we need the average person in society to understand that the creative industry is a real place. It's not just something people do because they didn't go, um, they didn't get A levels or they couldn't go to university. I so I remember people used to meet my mother and tell my mother, "What's the matter with Jackie? Why she don't go and teach or do something like that? What she doing this stupidness for?" That's what and, they would and say. Yeah, and in this day and age. Some people said, have, because I've had calls from predators and they ask me, what am I doing about getting another job? <laughs> yes. yes. So I, I was like, I really asked one of them and say, um, you, are you hiring? You need somebody to clean your yard? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the last one for this segment is your legacy. <sighs> My legacy is the people I've trained, people like you, and yes. so it's that they carry on that. They may yeah. not have run away, but they carry it on in every sphere of their of life. Wherever yes. they go, they will be a model. Yes, they and Jackie, who has want to follow, and that is I, my I'm um, the perfect example of your legacy because That's as long right. as I have breath in my body. And I share my work and I share my um, my journey. I will always talk about you and um, uh, from the perspective because in hindsight, as I said earlier, when I look back, I was like, oh my God, you are definitely an earth, an earth angel in my life because hadn't you said those words to me, maybe my journey would have gone in a different direction. But I know for a fact that. Um, God has chosen you and he has chosen to put me in that place because I couldn't, I came here to study and I find the money to pay the class, you know, and I was telling somebody about uh, my experience of dancing on the, on the, um, the cruise ship complex in a costume and dancing up and taking pictures with tourists and all that kind of thing. So I, um, I, I absolutely would encourage everybody, um, because you know, one of the things that I did when I, I was I went back to Guyana for a little bit, and I created something that is very similar to what you taught, and I call it um, I think it was um, Paula de Souza House of Elegance, right. right? And what I did is I created a program that taught some of the same things, the, the same modeling, the personality thing, and what I found is that there were so many women who they didn't take the class because they wanted to become a model. They took the class because they wanted to get back in touch with their femininity. Um, because a lot of women um, taught, go to school, get your education. So from school into high school, into university, doing the bachelor's, doing things. So at the end of that, now they, they're ready to enter the workforce. They totally lost touch of who they are as a woman. I've done classes in um, Suriname and was very successful, as well as a couple in um, Guyana. From my um, experience with planning the fashion show in the class and winning the prize for it, <laughs> I created two fashion shows in Guyana, um, Fashion and Purity. The first one had seven designers and it was all white. And then the second one was Fantasia. Where I, I love the whole concept of fashion and music fusing. You see like how they do um, 
um, this, the, the Victoria's Secret show. Mm -hmm. I had international models and Jackie. It was just an inspiration that came and I did it. And as a result of that, I was able to contribute to um, an organization that works with women who come from domestic violence. So I'm sharing it to tell you that what you do is very impactful. It has impacted my life in a tremendous way. And the fact that, like I said, at the time, I wanted to do cosmetology. I talked about going back to Guyana and, and, and creating my whole um, studio for hair. And all. I was not thinking about makeup. I I yeah. Yes. yeah. I am yeah. happy that yeah. I was able to be flexible. And this has taken me on such a tremendous, because I'm going to share this quote that sums up my whole, I mean, I shared before, and it's a quote by Les Brown. If you develop what you do well and become a master of yourself, if you set goals and go after them with all the determination you can muster, your gifts will take you places that will amaze you. And to date, that is my thing. And I know none of us is at our final destination. You will keep growing and you'll keep expanding. And as long as there is me and there's Kamala and there's your granddaughter and there's Abigail, Abigail says she's Terry I, um, and all these fabulous people that have been associated with you, you their legacy, it will live on forever. This is gonna go on YouTube for everybody who don't know. Paul B. Susan finally came out of her head and she started a YouTube channel. And one of the reasons is um, I wanna be able to have these conversations be there for the future generation because we wanna to continue to inspire people. It doesn't just end in this particular moment. So I don't know if there's anything that you wanna ask or um, contribute so we can let people go. Um, Paula, thank you for bringing Jackie to us this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. This is a comment from um, from Abigail. And then I have one more. Um, Mavis Smart says, Mavis Smart says, I'm walking living example yes. legacy. And um, Moses says, Miss Jackie came here to share her resilience and fighting spirit. I feel her power, I feel her power in her presence. Grateful to witness this conversation, Earth Angel sent to support and lift those who she encountered. Yes, and um, we have him see Jean Huggins says, still the best, she's one, she's the one and only. Yes, I believe that. And then you have a lot of support from Durante and Larry and um, Darlene. Elephant, his um, has a symbol of money. That's yeah, what that yeah. Is. yeah, this is um, elephants have a symbol, especially if they're trunks. When you keep them in your house, you say they should be up. The trunk should, yeah, the trunk should be up. I have a nice big gray one uh, on my um on my microwave. A nice, as a matter of fact, too, because a student um I had this event that I hosted in Ghana in 2017, a beauty empowerment workshop. I wanted, it was on my birthday. I wanted the ladies give me this box and it had this beautiful gold elephant in it. I thought about you immediately. So um, everybody, thank you guys for um, for being here. Um, Jackie, is there anything you want to add? Anything you want to ask me? I want to say that uh, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this afternoon. It I'm was, happy. I really, really enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> first ex virtual experience oh your first virtual experience well i'm happy yeah right. i'm happy that you had your yes. first um, virtual experience yes. and is there anything that you want to ask me personally because this really wasn't like an interview interview there was a conversation because i know i think the whole concept of interviews is so boring when we can have a conversation yes rather than just a hard and yes. hard. You, yes. No, I, I um I like I like conversations. You know? I think we covered I think we covered a real wide range. Yes, we did. That's what I say. I, I, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm always yes. so proud of all of my children. I'm so yes. proud of all of you. I feel so good. Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. So yes, if there's so no purpose, my purpose for being here. Yes. So if there are no questions for me, I will want to say thank everybody who um, who share your most valuable asset with us, as I always say. And I have to put in this part because I always tell you, remember to be kind to yourself. Remember to, um, to be good to yourself. Have the most amazing week and be safe. 
and I have to tell you, I don't know if any any of you follow um Tabetha Brown. She have this thing that she says, now y'all go about the, about your business and ensure you have a good day. And if you can't have a good day, don't go messing up anybody else's day. <laughs> But she have this beautiful southern accent that she said, you know, I can't, um, I can't see it. So, um, they want to say, Paul, all you need to do now is play friends. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again, Jackie. I love you. Thank I you. you very, very much. And I wish you um, blessings of continued health and success with everything that you do. And thank everybody on the outside. I appreciate you guys. Love you. And I will see you next week. Okay. Toodaloo. Bye. Thank you, Jackie. Bye. 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 Bye.